Welcome to CoreLogic's update on housing market conditions for February 2018. CoreLogic reported further slippage in dwelling values over the first month of 2018, with the national dwelling values recording their second consecutive month-on-month -month decline. After dwelling values held firm in October and November, they slipped by a third of a percentage point in both December and January to be down 0.7% from their peak. The fall in national dwelling values was broad-based across the capitals, but continues to be led by Sydney, where values were down by almost 1% over the month to be 3.1% lower since their peak back in July last year. Month-on-month -month falls were recorded across every capital city, except for Brisbane where values were steady and Hobart where dwelling values continued their strong run of growth, surging another 1% higher. Looking at the annual trend in housing performance, the two largest capital cities are the main drivers behind the slowdown. However, most other capitals have also experienced some softer growth conditions over recent months. Sydney's annual rate of growth peaked at 17.1% in May last year and at 13.1% in July for Melbourne. Current annual growth rates in both cities are substantially lower than their 2017 peaks, which highlights the significant slowdown over the second half of the year, which has continued into early 2018. Interestingly, the weakness in the housing market is most concentrated at the higher value end of the market. Segmenting CoreLogic's hedonic index into deciles reveals the most expensive 10% of national housing markets have seen dwelling values fall by 2.7% over the past three months, while falls were recorded across the 8th and 9th deciles as well. Growth has eased across the more affordable value deciles, but remains in positive territory. This trend of weaker housing market conditions across the premium sector of the market is most evident in Sydney and Melbourne where affordability constraints are the most prevalent and a surge in first home buyer numbers, thanks to stamp duty concessions in these states, is helping to support demand at the lower end of the valuation spectrum. The opposite is true across the other capital cities where housing affordability is less pressing and there's been no change to first home buyer incentives. As the housing market transitions away from growth, the number of buyers has eased off. National settled sales were 6.3% lower year on year, the result of both tighter credit policies as well as lower housing market sentiment and affordability constraints. Settled sales recorded the largest annual declines across Melbourne, they were down 11.7% compared to the previous 12 months, while Sydney and Brisbane also recorded a substantial fall in settled sales. On the other hand, residential property sales were higher across Darwin and Perth, albeit from a low base, as well as trending higher across Hobart. Outside of the capital cities, regional New South Wales continues to show the highest rate of annual capital gains at 6.8%. However, the rolling quarterly trend is now easing as large markets like Newcastle and Wollongong start to follow Sydney's lead and have moved through the peak rates of growth. If this trend continues, it's likely that regional Victoria where the quarterly trend is actually accelerating, could take over as the fastest growing regional market on an annual basis. Regional Tasmania is also showing a strong upwards trajectory as growth ripples away from Hobart. Regional areas of Queensland and South Australia have moved into positive growth territory over the three months ending January. That's the first positive quarterly shift in dwelling value since May 2017 across both areas. Regional Western Australian dwelling values continue to trend lower and values are generally substantially below the 2014 highs. In a sign of improving conditions, the annual pace of decline has improved relative to a year ago as commodity prices push higher and labour force conditions continue to strengthen. Perth dwelling values had been showing some signs of stabilising over the second half of 2017. However, dwelling values have fallen over the past two months, taking the market 0.3% lower over the quarter. Despite the recent fall, we believe the worst of the declines are now over. However, the market is expected to remain relatively flat over the coming months. Buy demand has lifted off a low base with the number of settled sales up 0.7%. Together with a 4.5% reduction in advertised housing stock, rising buyer demand is a strong signal that Perth's housing market is moving through the bottom of its cycle. The housing market goes a bit quiet in January, with overall transactional volumes dropping by about 25% between December and January. With this in mind, getting a firm reading on the housing market will become more straightforward as we progress through February. While dwelling values are now easing both at a macro level and across several of the capital cities, it's clear that Australian housing values aren't falling off a cliff. 
National dwelling values are down by just 0.7% over the past four months, after increasing by 41% during the growth phase. Strong jobs growth, falling unemployment, high migration levels and low mortgage rates will, in our opinion at least, help to support a soft landing in the housing market. Labour market conditions have generally been improving with stronger jobs growth spreading outside of Victoria and New South Wales, particularly into Queensland and to a lesser extent into Western Australia. Stronger labour markets are likely to help drive confidence and support mortgage demand. If the trend persists, stronger conditions may help to push wages growth off near record lows, which would also be a positive influence on housing market conditions. We're also seeing strong population growth contributing to housing demand. Migration rates have been trending higher, which is likely to continue into 2018. Overseas migration into Victoria and New South Wales reached record highs in mid-2017, and interstate migration has been on a clear upwards trajectory across Victoria, Queensland, Tasmania and the ACT. With financial markets forecasting a 25 basis point lift in the cash rate by early 2019, there's an increasing chance that mortgage rates will rise from the currently low levels over the next 12 months. Even if the cash rate was to remain stable, there is the potential mortgage rates could be adjusted higher due to increased bank funding costs or in order to fulfil APRA's local implementation of the now finalised Basel III requirements for regulatory capital held against residential mortgages. Higher mortgage rates will test the resilience of the housing market, especially considering household debt is tracking at record highs. However, the likelihood of mortgage rates moving substantially higher remains low. Overall, we're expecting national housing market conditions will remain as diverse as ever, with particular sensitivity to credit policies and any changes in mortgage rates. If you'd like to take a deeper dive on housing market conditions and statistics, there's plenty more to be found at CoreLogic's website, located at www.corelogic.com.au.